Welcome to Who's Who of Asian American Historians. I'm your host, Jimmy Ma. It's my pleasure today to have well-known attorney James Hsu on the show today. Thank you for having me today. James, it's our pleasure. You are well-known in the Houston Asian community, uh, but I also want you to be able to share a lot of your knowledge and expertise and what you've accomplished. Your resume is amazing. You're a Longhorn. You're also a Harvard graduate. Could you tell our audience a little bit about your background? Uh, I have been in Houston for over 20 years. Uh, I've been practicing law in this uh, community for that long. Time goes very fast. And, uh, and, and after I uh, got to Harvard Law School, that's over 20 years ago, that's the, one of the earliest uh, Chinese students uh, came to the United States. Uh, after that, I went to UT uh, for GID program. Then after that, I uh, basically uh, stayed in Houston uh, and I witnessed the enormous growth uh, and development of Chinese community here. You're part of the growth of Houston. You participated in it and witnessed in it. Um, what are some of your aspirations and your your outlook for the future for Houston? It is a very nice question. Uh, I uh, I have seen enormous changes in the past 20 years. I have to say, to mention a few who have contributed to this process, like the uh, the chairman of Southern China News, Mr. Li, and also the Dan Wang, uh, Xu Hua Zhang, uh, George Li, Wang Denzhen, Wang Yuan, all those gentlemen who have contributed to this process with their time, efforts, and their money. So I, I really, I, I'm really happy to see what we are today. Look at the new Chinatown today, the new Balea Boulevard. It, it is enormous, and, and I have, I'm very happy to see how we got here, and I'm happy to be part of it. Speaking of how we got here, you shared a very interesting story with me earlier that I want our audience to listen because you are probably one of the very first uh, law students from China to get your degree from not only Harvard but from UT Law School. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, something like that. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's a long time ago when I, after I graduated from UT Law School, I, uh, then I applied for uh, the state of Texas. Then I got a letter from the Supreme Court of uh, 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 State of Texas saying that I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I, I could not be admitted into Texas bar. Then I replied to uh, the Supreme Court of Texas. I said, uh, look at the uh, cases decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. This ha should not be an issue anymore. Then I checked the case. They allowed me to uh, be admitted into a Texas bar. So essentially, you fought and presented your first case without being a licensed attorney. Exactly, I was a student, uh, only, uh, only freshly passed the, the, the bar, and then I checked the cases, I said, I don't have to be a US citizen to be, become a lawyer with the state of Texas. Then the Supreme Court of Texas agreed with me. They allowed me to be admitted into bar. Definitely a pioneer in, in the industry, in your profession. Uh, being the first is always the most difficult. You have to put in a lot of extra work and a lot of determination to get to where you are. Mm. Being a new immigrant is already hard enough, and to, to study law makes it even harder. Is there any uh, specific stories that you could share with us based on your legal profession or what your attorney have shown you? Yeah, I agree. I mean, to be, you know, as a new immigrant, as myself, you know, as many of the audience today here, the, uh, the road uh, has not been easy at all. The, the, you, have to, you, you have to study hard. Your English you know, you, you know, was and, and it was a problem. For, 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 for us, for new immigrants. And uh, the law school life uh, was not easy. And uh, you have to really study very hard. And also I got a problem my, uh, when I was in law school is I got an allergy uh, to the uh, Austin uh, environment. So uh, that compounded my problem. So uh, basically every day I have to 
basically get, 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 you, know, you have to overcome the energy problem and also you have to study hard. So, uh, but I finally, I, I, I overcome. <laughs> Spoken like a true Texan and Estonian, we definitely have allergy issues. A lot of us do because, you know, the humidity. Yeah. And plus you moved down from Boston after attending Harvard. Yes. So yeah. from that extreme cold weather to this extreme, the other, other end of the spectrum, mm. uh, triggered that allergy issues. So you're saying it was very hard to study while you were having the allergy attacks. Yes, exactly. So basically, I have to, uh, uh, you know, over, you know, have to overcome that problem. And I, I took medicine, uh, yeah. but uh, no, it, it didn't help much. But um, allergy medication yeah. actually makes you drowsy and uh, usually makes you want to go to sleep. Exactly. So, yeah. so <laughs> exactly. That's the uh, that's exactly the problem. You have to uh, you know, really you know, study and uh, try to uh, you know, deal with this uh, the medical issue. So James, we talked about your legal profession, mm. but your firm is a unique in its own way because mm. you are an international firm. Mm. Could you tell us a little bit about what areas of law your firm practice? I basically, uh, uh, my areas of practice uh, are basically you know, as follows. You know, international company setups, uh, international law, uh, business immigration, uh, civil cases, a uh, little bit family uh, practice. Uh, those uh, areas you know, are really closely related to new immigrants. So they basically co are covering a variety of uh, areas. Definitely being bilingual and being able to understand uh, the American mm. culture, because you're, you're a true Texan now after 20 years. You even have a little Texas twang, a little <laughs> Texas accent. And, and being having the Chinese background uh, definitely helps your clients because you can understand where they come from because you've been there before. Um, we're going to continue this. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to take a short break and we'll continue. Welcome back to Who's Who of Asian American Estonians. I'm your host, Jimmy Ma. We have a very special guest today, well-known attorney, James Xu. Thank you for having me. <laughs> James was telling us earlier about the unique experiences he has as an immigrant law student, and also the unique cases he handles uh, at his law practice. Could you tell us a little bit more about some of the common legal problems that new immigrant clients have? Yes, the, uh, for any of those new immigrants, they, have, they, really, they really have to deal with a few uh, things to, to, be able to, to be able to stay here. First, they have to resolve so-called status issue. You have to have a green card before you can start doing anything. So that's the so-called immigration issue. That's, that issue is important. So that's why my office uh, has been doing immigration cases. So this case is a very important case, uh, issue for almost every one of those new immigrants. Then after you got the green card issue resolved, you then you talk about to set up a business or a company. In that case, we have to think how to get a new company started how to make the new business successful one. So that's the second part. Then after the, you set up the company, you, you will, and suddenly you will have, you have to have the business agreements, you will have business dispute, or even have lawsuits with somebody in this country. So basically uh, for Asian lawyers, we have really a lot of things to do for those immigrants. And that's why I'm busy every day, handling a variety of uh, cases every day. Uh, you're busy not just for Asian immigrants or international immigrants, you're also busy for international corporations too, as your firm handles that. Uh, you talked about uh, you helped a lot of Chinese companies set up uh, offices here and abroad. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, as uh, the uh, as China gets stronger and stronger, uh, Chinese companies or, or, or good Chinese companies have been very aggressively setting up a branch or subsidiaries uh, abroad in in the United States, in uh, uh, in England, in other countries as well. So I have been uh, uh, doing this for many years for those companies. The important thing is that you have to know what you're doing. You have to think 
and also uh, know you know, what the Lord requires them to do. This is very important. If you do not understand what the Lord requires them to do, then your case will not be a successful one. That's why you know, we, our firm has been uh, doing relatively well in, in this area. We, we understand the issue. We've been preparing our case carefully, and we try to make each and every case a, a successful one for our client. Interesting. Now, in Houston and in Texas, there's mm -hmm. been a rash of lawsuits against employers, uh, specifically restaurants. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions you could share with our audience about these lawsuits? Yes, I, I think it, it is very important for our China, the uh, restaurant owners to understand what the regulations require them to do. Many Chinese uh, restaurant owners do not understand. They have been doing their own way for years, for many years, or well, since the day one that, that did that, they keep doing that for, for many years. They did it in wrong way. That's why they got sued recently. In recent years, those lawsuits have been on the rise. We have been helping those uh, owners to defend them. The many those lawsuits, I could say, not very meritorious. You, you may say this may be frivolous. However, you got sued. That means you, you, you expose yourself in certain areas. So the, the, the uh, obvious or most uh, uh, apparent issues with those Chinese owners is they do not understand the so-called uh, overtime and the minimum wage requirement. You cannot just pay a flat salary to somebody, then ask them to work 60 hours a week. Even you pay them a very high salary for for a non-exempt employee. You know, if a, if a lawyer is okay, but you cannot ask a doorkeeper to work 60 hours for you and say I I pay you two thousand dollars a month. Even the minimum, you, you, you even meet the minimum wage requirement, you still may be violating the the labor law. That has been issue for the. Uh, 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 Chinese restaurant owners. We have been helping those company uh, owners uh, in the recent years. It's uh, quite a bit of cases like this. Yes, yes, yes. It's Just, uh, the, the, there's a deep rooted practice of believing in paying a salary and you know the overtime, you know, disregarding that. But the law changes. Yes, yes. So you have to assist in helping business owners keep up with the exactly. law. Exactly. You have to really understand what the law really requires you to do. You cannot say I paid you a lot of money. Some re uh, owners say I paid I paid him a lot of money. I paid more than anyone else. But that's not enough. You have to do this in a right way. You cannot do this in a wrong way. That's how they got sued. Speaking of doing things the right way, uh, we already know your educational background is exceptional. You also have an outstanding and very busy uh, mm -hmm. law practice. But yet, I see you in a lot of community events. I know you're donating your time and your financial resources to help these events. Could you let us know a little bit about what community service and events that you are interested in? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I have been uh, helping the local communities and also the Chinese uh, associations for the past 20 years. Uh, I think I helped, helped setting up each and every one of these local groups in the past 20 years as a legal advisor. I think I drafted a, uh, the bylaws or articles of uh, uh, corporations for those uh, uh, groups uh, in, in past 20 years. The, the thing is, uh, for me, the, first of all, I, I think you have to admit, it, it, it helps your business. <laughs> I can't you know, say it does not. It, it, it certainly helps the business. But for, for my own uh, uh, point of view, I believe it, it really helps the, each and every new uh, organization to be established. And you, 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 you have to understand the, the, the basically what the law requires you to do and do it right. So basically, uh, no, I'm trying to help those organizations the past uh, years. The, my time is, is actually has been very busy, but I, I have to balance it. I, I, my, my philosophy is uh, if, I, if I go out 
help somebody, and uh, it may come back to me with more business. So it's, it's not something just one way street thing. You see, I've, I treat it as something I, I contribute. Then people you know, you know, recognize this guy, is helpful and to the community. Then people will you know, come back to me. You want to plant the seed and, and, let, and let it sow and, and maybe gain rewards down the road. But for right now, it's purely based on wanting to expand and help immigrant community. Exactly. Like you said, you've mm -hmm. witnessed Houston grow in the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, your donations and mm -hmm. your contributions in law and giving legal advice mm -hmm. uh, for charitables mm -hmm. and for nonprofits is just as important as part of the business. Exactly. We actually, the community needs more care and needs anybody's help. And we, I have mentioned a few names and, and many, many others have contributed to this process, we really need to give them a, a, a warm applause for those guys who have made today possible. And I really uh, admire those guys. Uh, I'm happy I'm the one of those people. And I will try to do my share more in the future. You, you've been a pioneer, definitely been a pioneer in, in breaking through the, the mold, uh, being a first-generation immigrant, being a first-generation attorney, um, learning the language after you've graduated college is not easy. For a lot of our younger viewers, uh, they have to understand that uh, you guys did a lot already for us to make it easier for the next generation of Estonians, uh, for this big melting pot. That's why our city is so vibrant, is because of the contributions from people like yourself. One, there's something else that I've heard before that is, should I say, a contribution. I heard that you have a very unique uh, skill in a sport that is quite popular. <laughs> What is it? Yes, we call it, we call it national ball, the ping pong. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I have been playing uh, ping pong in a serious way for the past 20 years. Uh, I, 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 when I was little, I, somebody uh, taught me a little bit. Then I, when I really in law school, I started playing more. Then after that, after I graduated from law school, I have been playing at a, a professional uh, table tennis clubs in the past 20 years. Uh, now I, I, I myself own a club uh, in Houston, Texas. Uh, it's one of the largest and the most uh, professional clubs in the, in the state of Texas. So you would want uh, our audience members to find out more about it. Uh, are we welcome to join the club and challenge you? Uh, yes, I welcome anybody to come to play with me. Uh, I, uh, no, I could not. I can't say I can be there. And, uh, every one of you guys, but I could have most of you guys. James, the <laughs> reason why I say that is because I think you're being quite modest. Mm -hmm. You played in the U.S. Nationals and the U.S. Open. I mean, and this is. You're a lawyer, so you must be pretty good at these. Uh, I was better than uh, what I am now, actually, because I suffered an injury about 10 years ago. Oh. I suffered a shoulder injury. Then I, I basically uh, tr uh, tried to play uh, softly. <laughs> you were too competitive yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was more competitive 10 years ago. So, but uh, but uh, in recent uh, past one or two years, I, uh, my game is coming back. I, my injury is 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 gonna getting better. So uh, I I hope I will play better. Uh, my my it's called a second chance of uh, <laughs> my game. It, we will come back. So your goal is basically to promote the sport itself and to gain, uh, hopefully there's more people that get interested in it. Yes, I think to, to play uh, ping pong or uh, table tennis, uh, as we call it, uh, is, is, is a very healthy sport and uh, people love it. I mean, I got people as young as five, six years to over 80 years old uh, playing in my club. And I, I really, I spend a lot of time with them, and I enjoy it very much. Uh, it, 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 it really helps your coordination, your eyesight, your fitness, everywhere. Your shoulder, your legs. <laughs> it is not easy. The, hence, there's people think that how could you be injured for playing table tennis? But at a, at a very competitive, at the highest level of the sport, it is very difficult. It is also injury prone because you're, there's so much movement. Exactly, because you have to use all your force when you uh, got a good shot. You have to use all your power. So because my, that uh, called looping or hitting, um, I think my uh, move 
probably was not quite right. <laughs> <laughs> so it so injured myself. But uh, as you said, and, uh, to, to be uh, 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 kind of good player, you sometimes you suffer some kind of injury. That's unavoidable. But I will try to come back to get my you know, uh, injury fixed. So I will, I think I hope. But more likely, I, I want to see more people come to my club. You know, we are, we are, uh, we are host a, a two-star uh, tournament in my club on February 28th. And then on March 4th, uh, we will host an all-star table tennis uh, exhibition tournament in my club, uh, uh, participated by uh, top 12 uh, table tennis players in the United States. Two big events coming up very yes, soon. Yes, very soon. What yeah. is the name of the tennis club? The, uh, well, the, we call it the Texas Table Tennis Training Center, TTT. Okay. Yeah. Remember that, TTT, mm. Texas Table Tennis, tennis Training, Training Center. Center. Mm. And we could probably look it up online and find out more information. If you're interested, don't forget to participate because mm. it's one of the largest in the state of Texas. Yes. And do not challenge James, uh, like, like he said, he's retired. If you do want to <laughs> challenge him, challenge him in chess because that's your new hobby, isn't it? I, I do have the new copy uh, playing Chinese chess. Uh, it's, 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 it's different. One is a lot of movements. When you sit there, you think a lot. It's, it's uh, one is you know, physically challenged, and another one is mentally challenged. It's kind of it's, it's more like mind games. So, so, and I like it. I mean, this is a, a theme. You like to challenge yourself. That's why you have achieved. You achieved a lot more because of the constant self challenge. Uh, whether it comes to your education or to your profession or even to your hobbies, whether it's table tennis or chess, you kept challenging yourself to get better. Yes, I actually, you know, for all our new immigrants, that we have to learn every every day. We learn our languages, we learn our culture, we learn how to cope with the new environment, an everyday challenge. So basically, it is interesting. You know, we talked before the show is about the, we, we read the stuff both in Chinese and English every day, every minute. So it's kind of, we think about, you know, somebody asking, do you think, or first in English or Chinese? The answer is, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just really not sure. <laughs> James, it's, uh, it's really been a pleasure for you to come on the show. Um, you have a wide variety of interests and hobbies. It is fun to find out so much more about you. And we will be seeing you in Houston for many more years to come. I know you have other aspirations, and I hope you achieve all of them. Thank you all for tuning in to this show, Houston Who's Who of Asian Americans. We appreciate you and don't forget to tune in again. Thank you for watching.